Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. Back with the man, myth, the legend, also known as that ADU guy. How you doing, Derek? I'm doing wonderful. Awesome. Well, hey, I want to talk about appraisals. One of the things um, that people realize in this industry, the longer you're in investing, especially as you're, if you're trying to recycle out capital, is that you have a lot of appraisal risk. Uh, I keep reminding people a purchase money appraisal is very, very different than a refi appraisal. Mm -hmm. uh, it's what is frankly what makes Burr risky. And there's a lot of people that will be doing ADUs using debt and then hoping to get all or most of it back. And you're going to be relying on an appraisal. It's going to happen. And I got to tell you, if you're not doing this right, you will leave money in the deal. So Derek, you do this all the time. How would you suggest someone coach up, share, not intrude on? Because again, appraisers have a job to do. Uh, how would you uh, make that relationship work? Oh, awesome, Michael. You just said it in the end right there. It's a relationship. They're not providing a service. You're not paying them. You're not hiring. The lender's not hiring them. It's, it's really a people business. You're, you're building a relationship mm -hmm. with that appraiser. And I want to start by saying appraisers are not the same. Everybody mm -hmm. thinks appraiser like bank. Banks are not the same. If you say car, there's a lot of different kinds of car. There's a lot of different personalities, different horsepower. And appraisers uh, or the appraisal management industry is no exception. So I, I always start with that when people say, well, appraisers don't do this or appraisers always. It's like maybe that appraiser had that opinion. And that's their job is to yeah. use their training and, and education and certification to give you an opinion. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to dealing with appraisers on an accessory dwelling unit, then these rules really apply to, to most asset classes, but I have the most experience in this realm is building that relationship with them. So uh, usually the lender will schedule the appointment, but they call you to confirm. And I like to always just start by trying to build a relationship and say, hey, we can schedule on this date and this is gonna be kind of a unique one. And this is what I say. I say, I don't wanna do your job, but if it's okay with you, can I provide you with some data that might save you some time as you work on this assignment? I've never had an appraiser say no. Ask them if you can provide them some data that will save them time. They're always going to say, yeah. yeah. And most, you know, they're used to getting all these pictures of countertops and tile backsplashes mm -hmm. and all these little tricks that homeowners think are going to give them um, mm -hmm. maybe a leg up. So they kind of roll their eyes at first. But when you give them a professional package, I promise you they're going to look at it. Mm -hmm. And what I like to provide is an exact detailed list of the expenses I have into the accessory dwelling unit. So there's a couple of different ways that they use appraisal theory to value properties. There's comparable sales, there's costs, there's, you know, there's stuff based on the tax roll. And if I can give them a lot of data that shows exactly what I put into this ADU, assuming I didn't overbuild and overspend. And then I also in that packet, and I'm going to almost steal something from, from Dion here. He's got the, the rental uh, raise binder. Yeah, I just do binder strategy. Yep. The binder strategy. I just have the packet strategy for the appraiser. And I just slide the packet over when they show up. Again, it's got all my expenses so they know how much I have into it. Mm -hmm. And it also has area comps. And because we've become experts in our local ADU market, we know the good comps because we've seen them. We know what they mm -hmm. rent for. I've even gone as far as asking people if I can have a copy of their lease agreement. So I can say, hey, two blocks away on the same side of the street, there's an ADU that's of similar size. It rents for X amount a month. And this is what they just bought it for last year at 3%. This is uh, an estimated value I would have. So we don't have to get too far down in the weeds, but I like to give them three comps and an exact breakdown of what I spent. Yeah. I, again, I've had, I've had, you know, I've done hundreds of transactions and thus had hundreds of appraisals. There's basic, especially for residential, there are three ways to do it. And I would, I've never done an ADU one, right? I'm trying to get my first ADU done now. Uh, but these are the three things I would do. And it, it all starts with comps. You're absolutely right. I would try to find comps within half a mile. If that doesn't work up to a mile, comps, 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 comps. Second, I would get, I wouldn't hide anything. I would give them an architectural drawing. I would give them a breakdown of the, the cost of building the frame and then the windows. I, again, that one of the things they have to do is they have to do a replacement cost, number two. And then number three comp is income. I would, if you can give them uh, example leases, I would give them rent retominer, whatever it is, right? I would answer the three questions. Every appraiser in the residential game is going to do three ways. Now, because this is an income property, um, income is going to matter. Typically in a single family home, income is the one that's least used. 
but this isn't in, this is being built at least by most of you for income so don't forget that i think your example of of, of going down the street and getting rental rates and if you get a copy of their lease because the owner is cool with that awesome right so um again think comps think cost don't hide and also don't lie some of you out there are, are, want to kind of like fudge the numbers. Oh, by the way, I got my, my framing built for 28 grand. I'm going to tell them it was 38 grand. Once you get, if you are, if you get got on any line item, your entire packet is useless. Why would you do that? Why would you have that risk? Don't make it audible. Shoot, take photocopies of receipts or whatever. Let's give them everything. I think the packet or the binder 2.0, I think, it, I think we should have an ADU binder. I think you and Dion should get together and, talk about how you take that framework and make it ADU binder. I think that's a genius idea. We sh I should push you and Dion to work on, and then I'll just add to my course for free just because I can. Um, but I think that's the way to go. And then, yeah, incomes. So I think that's genius. Yeah, that, that's how it goes. And, and two other things I guess I would throw into that packet I do that I think are kind of the most important in the end is I always attach a copy of the municipal ADU code. Ooh. So it's short, it's usually five pages or less. When I say become an ADU expert in your zone, it's like find the five or 10 pages, read them. But I attach wow. that. And what that does is it preps the appraiser to know that I know what I'm doing and I know the regulations and I follow them. And then I also attach, and this is the most important part, the certificate of occupancy. Because again, everybody is, is saying, I have an ADU, I built an ADU, they're, they're marketing, they're valuing it as an ADU. And a lot of times they're not, they're illegal existing uses. So the certificate of occupancy is so key. That's and awesome. every once in a while, I can get the certificate of occupancy and I can get a, a tenant leased up so I can attach both of those. But I, I move pretty quick. And a lot of times I can't get somebody leased because the day I get the certificate of occupancy, I've already got the appraiser waiting for a schedule. Yeah. So if you can throw in your own lease, but the certificate of occupancy is huge along with the code. So this, this, uh, he, she, or they, they know what they're doing. They met all the standards and it's done legally. And there's a lot of value. I've never had an appraiser look at my costs mm -hmm. and give me any less ever, ever, ever. Yeah. Again, I think we need an ADU binder. Again, I'm going to push it one more time and get you and Dion together to take, take that idea for increasing rent. And let's just make an ADU binder. Again, I see it as sections. I think you add those. It's these kinds of things that you know that we need to templatize so others can copy rents and repeat. I think that will, that will be so much value for people going forward. So um, yeah, I think that's just awesome. Any other kind of closing thoughts on this? No, uh, the, the thing I'll just reiterate, just don't overbuild your accessory dwelling yes. unless that is your goal. I mean, if you live in a really fancy side of town and you have an A-class property that's worth $2 million, you would want to build an overpriced, uh, over-designed, over-engineered accessory dwelling unit. But most people that are going to use this for first-time home purchasing, breaking the barrier of home ownership, offsetting their ever ex uh, rising expenses of home ownership, um, build it for investment purposes. We want to be smart. We want to plan, design, and build an affordable ADU. And if we don't do that, we're going to have to leave a lot more money in the deal than we thought. Yeah. And again, the last thing I would close on, as we said in the beginning, I would plan for the first time you're doing an ADU to leave 25% in the deal. If you get more, great. If you run it smooth and process, great. Uh, but the first time, folks, let's be conservative. As you've seen on my channel, that's certainly what I am planning to do. Um, but again, I will keep everybody informed. Uh, hopefully we uh, are breaking ground soon enough. So Derek, how can people find you? Yeah, thanks, Michael. They can check me out on your site. I've got a new playlist I saw. Thank you so much. I love to help your listeners. You've done a lot. You've changed a lot of lives. And to be a little part of that means a lot to me. Awesome. If that's not enough to fill your ADU cup, check me out at thataduguy.com or thataduguy on Instagram is probably where I'm most active, but also on YouTube, anything on that ADU guy. You can call me, you can email me, you can message me. If you do, all I ask is that you're ready to take action. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. Take care.